Welcome to the next question devoted to deferred tax. We're still trying to understand the logic of deferred tax. In the previous uh, video, we went, or two videos, we went through a question that caused us to recognize a deferred tax asset. Well, let's see what will happen here. If this is something you want to get right in the exam, do keep watching and let's have a go at the question. On the 31st of December 2022, fictitious AG paid 12 million euro to acquire a strategic technology license with an estimated one year useful economic life and no residual value. For tax purposes, the license is subject to full amortization in the year of purchase, which means that on the 31st of December 2022, the last day of the year, because the payment or the, the acquisition happened here, the purchase happened here, you'll be able to recognize it fully as a tax deductible expense, something that will obviously lower your tax bill. And for the year ended 31st of December 2022, Fictitious reported 16 million in earnings before taxes. These earnings are fully uh, taxable at a rate of 30%. What is the deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability reported by Fictitious in connection with the technology license at 31st of December 2022? So let me please um, start off with uh, or by, um, as before, saying or drawing out the financial performance of the business for the year 2022. But in line with the approach from the previous questions, I'm going to split this into performance measured in accordance with the financial reporting rules as evidenced in the income statement. And um, on the other side here, the tax return, which is our basis for computing uh, taxable income and the tax to be paid. So this earnings before tax, or before taxes, this EBT, which uh, we're told was uh, 16 million over here. I'm going to put this into our income statement and I'm going to assume it's, uh, well, um, it, it says these earnings are fully taxable at a rate of 13, uh, 30 percent. So they're also going to enter on my tax return. But I'm assuming that the depre not depreciation, amortization, because it's an intangible asset of the acquired machine is not included here. Now, obviously, from a financial statements perspective, I'm not in the income statement going to have any amortization yet. So the reality of this scenario is such, and I'm going to draw this on the timeline to make it easier, is that here we've got the 31st of December 2022. And obviously the acquisition of the technology license, previously I said machine, wrong, it's a technology license, it's an intangible asset, is that we make the acquisition, we make the purchase here, purchase of license at a cost of, at the top, 12 million euro. And even though the license isn't really used much, you know, on the 31st of December, I guess it only arrives. And then it's actually going to be used, um, the license is going to be used in the next year because we're told it has an estimated one year useful economic life. So over here, 2023, that's when the company will be getting the benefits of it. Um, however, from a tax perspective, it creates an immediate benefit. Uh, it has an immediate tax consequence. Because in 2022, we are told it's, it's, it's eligible for full amortization in the year of purchase. So what I'm going to do here is show that under the tax return, amortization of uh, 12, essentially, 12 million, the full value of the license hits our tax return. I say hit, but it's a positive uh, thing because that allows us to have lower taxable income in the year of purchase, equal to four. And that is obviously the basis for the computation of any tax which needs to be paid off to the tax office. So times, what's the tax rate? 30%. Four times 30% uh, is going to be 1.2. That's how much we pay to the tax office. 
And as you very well know, this in a moment will become a component of our um, tax expense over here in the in the income statement. However, before I do that, let me just make the difference between the treatment of this amortization for tax purposes and its treatment for financial reporting purposes. As you will know, amortization or depreciation is an expense which is spread over time over the useful life of the asset. And essentially from financial from a, from a financial reporting perspective, what we will do is we will take the 12 million and spread it out over the entire useful life of the asset, which is the year 2023, in accordance with what it says in paragraph number one. So the amortization of the asset with a total of 12 million will enter our income statement in the year 2023. And there is therefore the argument to say, well, if you're including amortization in the 2023 income statement from a, uh, from a financial reporting perspective, shouldn't you also make sure that the tax consequence, which is this 12 million tax deductibility, which obviously creates a tax saving, it's something positive, isn't there an argument to also defer or delay the recognition of that to the same period in which you do the amortization so that they're sort of in line in the same column in terms of timing. Now, the tax benefit or the tax saving is simply 12 million times whatever is the tax rate, 30%. That's obviously 1.2 times 3 equaling 3.6. So, the whole job of deferred tax this time will be to make sure that this benefit enters the income statement in the same period when amortization hits it as well to make things aligned, so to speak, from a logical perspective. How are we going to do this? Well, amortization in the income statement for the first year doesn't exist. We're not amortizing the asset. If we were, we would only be doing it for one essentially day of use. So I'm even not entertaining that thought at all. But our tax expense is going to be obviously composed of two things. As before, current tax, that is the amount 1.2. And on top of this, we're going to have deferred tax. And look, the whole idea here is I know I've already received the benefit from a tax perspective of amortizing this asset fully, but I want to achieve something opposite. I want to say, oh, let's pretend that this benefit hasn't happened so as to make so as to recognize it in the income statement later than it has actually happened. So what I need to do this time is hit my income statement with an additional expense, an additional expense of 3.6, so as to make the tax expense bigger than in reality the tax paid to the tax office. Because as I said, I want to have this clean so as to recognize the benefit in the next year, not in the year when the benefit actually occurs. That's why I need to load my tax expense with an additional 3.6 of cost, making the tax expense total equal to these two items combined. So that's 4.8. And when you now compute the net profit for the period, it's going to be 4.8 times, sorry, 4.8 tax expense, but deducted from a EBT earnings before tax of 16. So that's 16 minus 4.8. 11.2. In keeping with the previous examples that we did in the previous videos, I want to check the effective tax rate here. And this is going to be the relationship of 4.8, the reported tax expense, and 16. Let's see what we come up with. 16, no, 4.8 divided by 16, that's 30%.
So once again, it's in line with the statutory tax rate, even though 4.8 wasn't the amount of tax payable in respect of the period. Let's now try to solve the question and provide the answer. The answer is going to be 3.6 because that was the deferred tax item sitting here in the income statement. So definitely not 1.2. 1.2 is actually the current tax. Now, will it be a will it cause the appearance of a deferred tax liability or maybe a deferred tax asset? Well, it's a question of signs. In the previous scenario that we did, we had in the income statement a minus figure within deferred tax or a figure in, in brackets, which I said was offsetting an expense, making it lighter because we were looking forward to a tax saving in the next year when interest was supposed to be paid. And as a result of looking forward to a tax saving, we created an asset in the balance sheet. This time, it's the other way around. The whole tax benefit has already been realized in the first year in 2022. And what we're looking forward to in the future or towards in the future is not a tax saving, but the realization that we will actually have to pay more income tax uh, because there will be no income tax, uh, taxable amortization left to lower our taxable income in the year 2023, seeing as we used up all of that amortization benefit or potential in 2022. And if that's what you're looking towards in the future, you create a deferred tax liability, which is in line with the fact that here, deferred tax is initial expense. So it's a drag on profit and also a drag on equity, therefore. And if you're, if you're creating a drag on equity, uh, you're not going to, at the same time, create a deferred tax asset. That would go in the wrong direction. A drag on equity can be compensated or offset with the creation of a liability. So this leads to the creation of a deferred tax liability. And therefore, we come to the conclusion that the answer to this question must be answer 3.6 deferred tax liability. So answer B. Now, we can also naturally apply the rules, which I told you are the basis of how the, curricul how the curriculum views uh, deferred tax here. Um, and those rules concerning, you know, assets um, and liabilities and their respective carrying amounts and uh, tax base. So let me do this just to make sure we can, uh, we can solve the question in that way as well, if you wish to, the sort of the correct way of computing this. Let's compare over here the carrying amount of the intangible asset, the license, with its tax base, so how much it is kind of worth for tax purposes, and therefore compute the difference, right, between the two, which is going to be temporary. At the 31st of December 2022, from a uh, from a financial reporting perspective, IFRS or US GAAP, we've just introduced the license into our balance sheet. Its worth or its carrying value is 12. Well, we introduced it also for tax purposes, but <laughs> immediately amortized it fully down to zero. So it has no um, carrying amount from a tax perspective, so no tax base. And actually, one year later, 31st of December 2023, from a financial reporting perspective, a balance sheet perspective, the license would have already been amortized. So down to zero because it had only a one year useful life. And from a tax perspective, it's already been amortized a long time ago. So there's still zero. So temporarily, we've got the carrying amount of the asset being higher than its tax base. And it's a temporary difference of 12, which is temporary because it subsequently becomes zero. Now, in accordance with the rules I showed you in the previous video, if you have an asset, and a license is definitely a part, you know, part of assets, more specifically intangible assets, and you have a temporary difference where a carrying amount is higher than tax base, we refer to this as a taxable temporary difference. And taxable debt temporary differences uh, give rise to liabilities, deferred tax liabilities. And we compute it as the difference 12 times the tax rate, 
that's obviously 3.6 million, but only as long as this difference persists. So in the subsequent year, it's going to actually disappear.